This video is going to investigate the altitude of the North Celestial Pole. For observers in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, the North Celestial Pole is approximately at the location of Polaris, the North Star. We're going to find the altitude of the North Celestial Pole is related to the latitude of the observer. Um, so we'll talk about a few definitions here. First, altitude, that's how far an object is above the horizon above the horizon. It's not north, south, east, or west, but the reference um, location is the horizon. If the altitude is zero, the object is on the horizon. It, at sunrise this, and at the solstice, it would be the sun would be towards the east, but it would have an altitude of zero degrees when it rose. It also has an altitude of zero degrees when it sets. So if an object is on the horizon, its altitude is zero degrees. doesn't matter if it's north, south, east, or west. If the object is directly overhead, the altitude is 90 degrees. The altitude is 90 degrees, and this overhead location on the sky is called our zenith, called our zenith. Uh, so you're going to have to use your imaginations here. Um, I'm going to try to help with a drawing. This drawing is going to show the line called the meridian, the line called the meridian. I'm going to draw this for an observer in the northern hemisphere. Uh, this meridian line, I'll go ahead and scoot up the, uh, the drawing here. This meridian line, I'm going to start here in the south, on the sky. So on the sky, this is not inside the Earth's atmosphere. It's way out on the sky, and as far as you can see to the southern point horizon, that's where we start the meridian. And it continues up to the zenith in this arc of a circle, continues up to the zenith. It continues through the zenith, passes through the north celestial pole, and then down to the north point on the horizon. So I'm drawing here this arc called the meridian. It's going to be important for our discussions of how we calculate the altitude of the north celestial pole. So towards the south we start. We just tilt our head back Do we go over overhead. That's our zenith. Might have to turn your body around if your neck's not very flexible. And you keep imaginary, draw this imaginary meridian line on the sky, this half arc of a circle through the North Celestial Pole down to the north point. So that's the start. Now let's talk about uh, some other important uh, facts about our our sky here. We have something called the celestial equator on the sky. It's a circle on the sky and it's directly above the Earth's equator. So if you would imagine the Earth's equator, uh, someone has a rubber band that's flexible along the Earth's equator and then we stretch that out, keeping it in the shape of a circle and expand it out till it hits where you think the sky is. Of course the sky is three-dimensional but um, it kind of looks uh, like a sphere, a celestial sphere, as we look at the sky. Looks like the stars are embedded on the celestial sphere. Of course, they are not. There's this three-dimensional aspect. Some stars are close to us, some are further away. But uh, for this discussion, we're just going to use this concept called the sky. There's a celestial equator circle on the sky everywhere directly above the Earth's equator. The North Celestial Pole is a point on the sky that's right above the Earth's geographic pole. And there's 90 degrees of angle in between the equator and the pole, both on the Earth and on the sky. So 90 degrees from the equator of the Earth to the pole of the Earth, 90 degrees from the celestial equator to the North Celestial Pole. We're going to let theta be the observer's latitude and we're going to you know, do some work with angles here. Uh, the angle between the point where the celestial equator crosses the meridian and the zenith is theta. And I've got an auxiliary diagram to, to help you with this last sentence. But the angle between the point on the sky where the celestial equator crosses the meridian and the zenith, that's the angle theta, the latitude. So here we are on the Earth. And we have the center of the Earth, we have the equator, we have an observer here at some latitude. Um, maybe it's 45 degrees, the way I've kind of drawn it here, but that would be the angle theta. It's the angle 
from the equator up to the observer's location along the... Uh, I'm doing a circular Earth here. The Earth isn't quite circular, but let's pretend it is a circle uh, for the cross-section. So we have our observer here. Now, this North Celestial Pole, that's a point on the sky. It's very, very, very far away. And I can draw these lines parallel to each other. That's acceptable. And they both end at North Celestial Pole. In fact, I'll go ahead and put North Celestial Pole here. Then we have the zenith line. The zenith is directly overhead from our observer. And then the celestial equator. The uh, celestial equator is above the Earth's equator. Again, it's on the sky. It's extremely far away from the Earth. So both of these lines point towards the celestial equator. And the part that's important up here is here at our observer. Um, this observer will have a local horizon. And what we want to know is what is the altitude? What's the altitude of the North Celestial Pole above the horizon of the observer? Um, so celestial equator, theta is our latitude. And I have... Uh, you know, from geometry, I have a straight line here. I have two parallel lines. So the angle theta here is also the angle theta at this uh, point in our diagram. And that's our latitude. We have our zenith, north celestial pole. Let's see if we can determine the, uh, the altitude of the north celestial pole. So back to my uh, other page here. This kind of summarizes what this that previous sketch was. So the meridian starts in the south point. There is a place above the south horizon where the celestial equator is located. Again, this is drawn for an observer in the northern hemisphere. Then we have zenith, north celestial pole, and horizon. And to put a particular number in here, maybe our observer is at 40 degrees north latitude. That 40 degrees is going to be the angle in between the line to the celestial equator and the line to the zenith. How is it that we can determine the altitude of the North Celestial Pole? I'm going to first do it here in symbols, and then I'll do it over here with the, with the numbers. Well, what is the angle between the North Celestial Pole and the Celestial Equator? It's 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees. So if we use up theta degrees here, this angle is going to be 90 minus theta. The zenith. What's its angle compared to this horizon plane? What's its angle? Again, it's 90 degrees. So if I use up the angle 90 minus theta here, this technically would be 90. Oops, get that page out of the way. 90 minus the quantity 90 minus theta. And what we find is we get 90 minus 90 and plus theta, the 90 minus 90 is a zero, and we have the angle theta here. The altitude of the North Celestial Pole is theta, if theta is the latitude. So let's put in numbers here. 40 degrees, again we have a right angle from celestial equator to North Celestial Pole, so I've got 50 degrees here, these two add up to 90. And then we have a right angle between the zenith and our horizon going towards the north point. So I need 40 degrees, so that 40 and 50 add up to 90. 50, 40 degrees is the altitude of the North Celestial Pole as we uh, have an observer at 40 degrees latitude. Um, our general conclusion, the altitude of the North Celestial Pole is equal to the latitude of the observer, and we're using theta symbol here. What about an observer who's standing at the Earth's North Pole? At the Earth's North Pole, the person's latitude is 90 degrees. What is directly overhead if this observer is standing at the Earth's geographic North Pole? Overhead is the zenith, and overhead is the North Celestial Pole. How far is the zenith away from the horizon? It's 90 degrees. The altitude of the North Celestial Pole is 90 degrees. And I'll come back to this drawing just a little bit. Um, if we have a different observer here, an observer at the North Pole, here is the uh, horizon for this observer, and 
We've got the North Star up here, roughly at the North Celestial Pole. And we've got 90 degrees for the altitude of the North Celestial Pole. This person's latitude is 90 degrees. They're 90 degrees away from the equator. Um, what about for an observer that's at the Earth's equator? At the Earth's equator. Um, when we're at the Earth's equator, then the celestial equator is at the zenith. The celestial equator is at the zenith, and the altitude of the North Celestial Pole is going to be zero degrees. So I'm going to go back to this drawing. Our observer is now at the equator, and this observer's horizon looks like this. Our zenith here is the celestial equator. And again, off this way, at a great distance away from this observer, I've got a line that goes to the North Celestial Pole. The North Celestial Pole is right on the horizon of zero degree altitude for the North Celestial Pole for the case of an observer at the equator. Um, so there we have a discussion of the location on the sky of the North Celestial Pole. Um, again, I'm working this for the Northern Hemisphere. There are similar diagrams for the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, the Northern Hemisphere is a little bit more interesting because I live in the Northern Hemisphere. Sorry about the bias there. And we have a North Star. The South Celestial Pole, there is no bright star near the South Celestial Pole. Uh, currently, for Several tens of thousands of years, we have Polaris near the North Celestial Pole. Uh, if you want to delve into that a little bit more, look up the topic of precession, and you'll find that the North Star will not always be the North Star. Right now, our North Star is near the North Celestial Pole, and roughly the North Star has an altitude equal to the latitude of the observer. So with that, I'll ask you to keep reading your astronomy textbook and ask your instructor if you have questions.